Well, this is uh, at least an exciting day for me. And the first thing I'm doing is taking out a firing. We're at about 165 degrees here, which is about the lowest temperature at which my firing mix, which is roughly half beeswax and half walnut oil, is liquid. And these are all peach. And I fired them a little early. Just because I wanted peach. So they've been soaking for Oh, close to a year. Oh, look at that. Wow. It's asking for it. I'm going to hold it up to <clears throat> let the stuff dribble off. It's expensive stuff, beeswax and walnut oil. And I'm going to be using this again when I fire a set of bowls. And that's the second excitement. Uh, the excitement of today is how many of these spoons have cracked because sometimes wood cracks anyway when cooked dry in two and a half days and if I don't soak the wood long enough which would be about two to three years uh, it tends to be more likely to crack things are looking good here this uh, picnic cooler I'm dumping them into, I call my annealing container. Wow, that's a beauty. Handle's not cracked, the bowl's not cracked. Ooh, ooh. That one was scary. See, also they warp a lot. Warping is good because warping increases flexibility of the finished spoon and strength. I mean, the strength and flexibility of this peach wood is just plain wonderful. Look at that. Now, they still can, oh, they still can crack in the annealing chamber where they will sit for the next day, cooling off slowly from roughly 170 degrees to uh, room temperature. These are going to be wonderful spoons. I may show these spoons to you again when they're finished. I have a couple of stories I promised to tell that I can do while finishing spoons. The same way I told that story of John Greenleaf Whittier earlier. And I think you can probably pause now. Here is a crack. And this is not a bad one, and this spoon uh, will be made into a personal eating fork or a serving fork, small serving fork. So it's not lost, but that's uh, what is likely to happen when uh, I don't soak for long enough and uh, when uh, I dry wood fast, although I'm driving it under oil, which is a good thing. And it's, it, the wood has that tendency anyway. And pause. Okay. Here's a unique one. Uh, and you'll notice that since the spoons are carved with the shape of the tree, the way the growth of the tree, the way they crack is also with the growth of the tree. So I can pop that piece right off and uh, the spoon will be barely barely compromised, just be a slightly smaller spoon. This is one of the wonderful advantages to working with the, the tree itself. Here's a larger spoon, obviously that cracked in the firing. This will be a perfectly lovely large serving, large serving fork. Pause. Mm -hmm. 
hokey dokey. Let us go on. Being as how spoons don't look all that attractive coming out of the firing, I thought I would take a minor digital time out here and move ahead a week where I have finished three of them so you can see what I'm so excited about. Peach is uh, a rare wood for me because all peach trees are planted by people who want peaches. The peach tree is is not a long live tree and people tend to keep them as long as they will produce a few peaches which is much longer than the wood is good for. So by the time a, a, an orchard person is done with his peach tree there's nothing left to make a spoon of. So the only way uh, for me to get peach for spoons is to uh, get trees from somebody who wants them removed before they are done producing, which is rare and requires some politics. In this case, the uh, owner of the orchard uh, retired and did not need so many peaches, and so I'm kind of getting the trees one by one as he uh, he's overproducing for his own personal needs. Notice right here a uh, up up a bit of a worm worm action here, and here we're right on the edge. This is an old peach tree getting ready to give up the ghost. Uh, notice also, if it's for the fun of it, the uh, in curve in this bowl. Now, normally speaking, I would take this out as uh, not proper spoon making. I would, I would make this into a, a more regular spoon shape. But if you notice, the grain in the wood is, is curving the same way, and this spoon came out this way naturally, I could have uh, forced it into a more uh, conventional spoon shape, but did not. And that is my philosophy as a craft artist, let the tree speak. And when you see my spoons, and when they seem to be odd-shaped, Look at the grain in the wood, which of course is very visible in peach, and, uh, and notice why they are shaped as they are. Ain't, ain't this a beauty? Look at the shape of the bowl. And look right here on the edge. We're right on the edge of a dying tree. There's just a little bit of where the where the worms were and a little bit of spalting right on the edge there. And there's another spot right here. Mm, you can't see it, can you? I can, but you can't. Anyway, peach is special stuff. And it's a good batch. And I hope you get to see it. Here's a wonderful, perfect flaw. Just right in the handle, right where the tree itself bent to make this perfectly beautiful spoon. And now we go back to today, a uh, very exciting day, and on comes the next adventure. So, uh, here is the second excitement of the day is uh, these are roughed out bowls made from the root burls of the mountain laurel that was soaking wet and had been soaking for four or five years before I roughed them out and uh, using a what I believe to be a uh, antique technique I have packed them in wet sawdust and put them up under uh, under uh, the metal roof in the attic uh, on the 30th day of January of 2017, which is something over two years ago. 
and left them to dry slowly, packed in wet sawdust. And uh, today, I take them out. And the question is again, have they cracked? Or have they not cracked? And the reason for doing that today is because the firing is hot. And I don't want to do that. I want to put these in right where the pink spoons came out. So there we go. All right, you ready? Let's see what we can do. I'll tip it towards you. After two and a half years, ooh, 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 look at that. Hee hee. Well, my goodness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. See any cracks? I'm hardly looking at them. I think. I think I'm looking. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Are you as happy as I am? Don't know why you should be. I, I'm the one who's going to get to finish these and sell them. <laughs> you can buy them. <laughs> All right. So there's obviously, this is a very, a place obviously was going to crack. And there's the crack. And it's pretty solid, and I think I'll, I don't think I'll, that will look like the flat in the bottoms, of course, and that kind of thing. And this one, oh my goodness, I had forgotten, completely forgotten, how many, oh no, beauty, look at that. Sweetheart, perfect, perfect. More, more, more. This is. Wonderful. Aha, whoop, here's the handle. Yes, that probably, these probably came from two big groups of mountain laurel. Oh, goodness. <laughs> That's stupid. What do you think? <laughs> well, actually, as a display, as a bowl, displays beautifully as a something with a spoon with a handle is silly but hey this is art silly okay all right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think we're there oops wait wait no I think, I think we have found the dinosaur I think we've dug up all the bones thank you very much for being here and sharing this with me. I am a very happy fellow and I can't imagine how many hours there's still to do on these but uh, oh boy.